If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We can begin answering this question by looking at the definition of electric flux. And according to that definition, we have the electric flux equaling an integral of the dot product between the electric field and the so-called dA vector. And that dA vector would always point perpendicular to the surface and towards the outer part of the surface. So for example, if we had a Gaussian surface that was shaped like a cylinder and we wanted to draw the dA vector, let's say at a point right here, we would make sure that we point that vector perpendicular to the surface, so it would form a nice right angle, and then projecting away from that Gaussian surface. So it looks something like that. Now, in this question, it turns out that the magnitude of the electric flux through the circular ring is actually going to be the same as the magnitude of the electric flux through the netting. And so we can really change the question to finding the magnitude of the electric flux through the circular ring. Now, we recall that for a dot product, we can rewrite that as the product of the magnitude of the electric field, the magnitude of this dA vector, and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the electric field and the area vector. If we come over here, we can see the electric field is pointing to the right, and the dA vector is also pointing in this direction here. And so hopefully we can see that the angle between that electric field and the dA vector is actually zero degrees. And of course, the cosine of zero degrees is one, so actually we can drop that from the integral. Furthermore, the electric field is a constant value, so we can actually remove it from the integral. And so we're left with just integrating dA. And of course, the integral of dA would just be the entire area of this circular ring. So we can, after integrating, come up with the area of that circular ring, which of course is just pi r squared. At this point, we have to simply plug in the electric field, which is given to us in millinewtons per coulomb, so we'll actually have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 3 in order to get it into newtons per coulomb. And then the radius of the circular ring was given to us in centimeters, so we'll make sure that we convert it to meters, multiply it by 10 to the minus 2. So we'll go ahead and plug in for the radius and the electric field. And so when we work that out, we get approximately 1.14 times 10 to the minus 4, and then the unit of the electric flux is going to be a newton multiplied by a meter squared divided by coulombs. So this indeed is the correct answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to this email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.